Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. You got a lot of energy this morning, I can tell. So... Hey, so I'm Joel. I'm the teaching pastor here. Uh, pastor Marcus and Natalie, they're on a little break for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to be speaking today. And um, we're going to take a break from our Greater Than series because this is a special Sunday. This is Thanksgiving Sunday. So I wanted to give a special Thanksgiving message. Um, man, I have had, I'll tell you this, I'm going to be honest, okay? You guys know I memorize my messages. Did y'all know that? Okay. I don't just get up here and just shoot from the hip. Like, if you come to both services, you'll see it's the same message. Um, Sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, man, I've been having a hard time focusing this morning. In fact, it's so much so, though, look, I even brought a little note card. But anyways, um, we've all got a lot on our minds lately, don't we? I I just, I I just, like, it's weird. I've been walking with the Lord for about 38 years now, um, and... I don't think I've ever had more doubts in my life, but I've also never had more confidence in my life. Isn't that weird that you can have doubts and still be confident that God's going to do his thing and pull it out? And if you're in that place today, you're like, man, I'm just having a lot of doubts. Hey, don't worry. That's all right. Doubts are okay. God is not, he's not offended by your doubts. Um, but make sure that your doubts lead you to seek him because he's the answer and he's the truth you're looking for. So, um, all right. So, this morning, I want to talk about gratitude. And um, I, th- I think the best way to introduce gratitude is, is, a, is through a weird back door. Um, when I first, I was talking to Danny. Danny's actually going to be speaking next week, by the way, y'all. So um, I was talking to Danny, and he was asking about when I first started speaking, what was the experience like? And, and I said, man, I had to kind of learn how I prepare a message and what works for me. Because, you know, every pastor's got their unique way of giving a message. Pa- pastor Marcus is a very different kind of message than I give, usually. Um, and so I had to kind of learn what it was. And I'll never forget, right, right out the gate when I started speaking, I was getting my confidence up. I was feeling pretty good about my ability to speak. And I got invited to speak at a, a pretty large university, a Christian university in East Texas. And so I went, and the chaplain invited me to speak. And uh, they, you know, thousands of students showed up. I don't know how many there were. It was at least 1,000. And they're packing this place out. And I was, I was like, all right, man, I'm going to bring the fire, you know. That's a charismatic thing people say. I'm bring the fire. Um, and if you've noticed, I don't usually bring the fire. But uh, so I got up and I, was, I, was, I started talking and I was like, man, I'm going to really connect with these, these teens, you know. And about five minutes into the message, a kid right in the front row pulled out a book, put on headphones, pulled his hood over his head and checked out and started listening to music while I'm, pre- while I'm speaking. And I was like, and it kind of it kind of ruffled me. I was like, huh, ah. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to look at him. Well, a few minutes later, a girl over here on the left pulled out a book and started studying and put her headphones on, making it clear she didn't want to hear me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is. I literally, for the rest of the message, I was so flustered. I couldn't remember my points because I try and memorize the message. I was so flustered because I was looking at this punk over here and this <laughs> this kid over here. They were studying, and I. Anyways, I was so irritated the whole message. Well, afterwards, the chaplain came up to me. He was like, man, I've never seen these kids so engaged. Great job. But I didn't believe him. Because here's the thing. There were a thousand kids in there listening to me. You know who I saw? The two goobers in the front that weren't. And here's the thing about it. We are all prone to something called selective abstraction. It's honing in on one detail and ignoring everything else. And here's what I know about you. You've got something in your life right now that is leading to a lot of selective abstraction. There's something that just keeps going on in your head. It's like a loop in your brain, and you just can't shake it. Maybe it's this whole election thing. It's like, oh, and you just can't shake it. You find yourself waking up in the middle of the night thinking about it. Maybe it's that thing with your husband. Maybe it's that thing he does. And you're just like, you know, when you first married him, you thought it was cute. (laughs) Now you're like, if he does that again, the gloves are coming off. 
I'm going to punch him, right? Some of you, man, maybe it's the thing going on with your son, and you're just like, why? What was he thinking? I didn't raise him to be that way, and you just keep getting over. You're like, what did I do? Did I do something? Some of you, it's the situation with that one person at your job. Like, honestly, the job's doing quite well, but it's that one person that makes your life hell, and you just do not want to go to work on Monday because you're like, I'm going to see her (laughs) or him, right? We've all got areas in our life where there's just one thing, man, and that one little thing can ruin everything around you. And in fact, the reality is if, it's, if you really look from the big picture at what's going on around you, things are actually pretty going pretty good. But there's that one thing that just keeps looping in your head, man. You're like, oh, oh, it gets you mad. Maybe it's that thing somebody did to you, and you just still can't believe they got away with that injustice. Like, this is... God, why aren't you doing something about them? They should not have gotten away with that. And we just loop it around and over and over again. And here's the thing. It becomes so bad sometimes that no matter how good things are around us, we can actually lose track of the reality around us. And that can actually become our reality. Because here's the thing about your mind. Okay, this is a fact about your mind. What we focus on always becomes bigger to us. Have you noticed that? Little example of this. For a year, my wife and I have been wanting to get a new car. And I started to, I started to, I initially wanted a Nissan. And everywhere I went, I saw these Nissans. This one Nissan I wanted. I'm like, man, see, everybody's driving that car. They're, it's everywhere. But then Emily's like, I think we should get a Toyota. And I was like, nobody has Toyotas. <laughs> but then guess what? I started seeing Toyotas everywhere, the exact Toyota I wanted, because I started thinking about that Toyota, and then I started getting visions of my mind, in my mind of me in that Toyota, driving. I was like, yeah, you ever, that's what happens. Like, you, you all of a sudden, you, you've ignored everything that didn't fit in your framework, but then all of a sudden, you start focusing on it, and it becomes bigger, and you're like, dude, everybody drives this car. It must be a good car, when just a few weeks ago, you saw everybody was driving the Nissan. Because, oh, that must be a good car, right? And then we tell ourselves all sorts of things to convince ourselves that that truly is reality because it's so big in our brain, it must be reality. And, and the, the, the thing about it is this can go south in a hurry because if you choose to focus on negative things, on the negativity around you, you can actually block out all of the good that's happening around you and your reality can become completely negative in your mind. In fact, as a mental health counselor, which doesn't actually like, who doesn't actually like doing counseling, um, I have a master's degree in counseling, and one of the things that, that, that we were taught early on is that, you know, the foundation for mental health is actually gratitude. Most mental health issues are based on somebody trying to escape pain because they don't like what they see a reality that's happened in their life. And sometimes it's horrible things that have happened to them. But if you can get a patient, first of all, focused on gratitude for small things, for little things in their life, you can start to pull them out of, of, out of depression, out of wanting to hurt themselves. But it starts with small little bits of gratitude, being grateful for what you have instead of focusing on what you don't have. Because there's always something you don't have that you wish you had. But instead of focusing on what you don't have, Focus on what you do have and what is good and right, whatsoever is pure and good and lovely. If anything is of good report, Paul says, think about these things. But that's hard. It's easy to say that. But the reality is you've got some irritating things in your life. You've got some irritating people in your life. We all do. You've got some irritating things about your environment. When I first moved to San Antonio, we moved from Houston. And I love plants, okay? And in Houston, it rains like every other day. So my plants were flourishing and green and lush. It was tropical. And then we moved three hours west. It don't get, we don't get rain around here, y'all. My plants all dying. And I would sit and complain about it. I'd be like, oh, it's like a desert here. And Emily's like, what is your problem? She's like, stop complaining. I'm like, my plants, my plants. It never rains. And I would sit, I would literally sit and watch the radar, on my phone. And here's the really crazy thing. Something about where our house is positioned in San Antonio, a huge storm can be blowing in from the west. And about five miles from our house, it'll go, 
dissipate, then reassemble south of us. And we get no rain all around us, all this rain. And my plants are dying and I'm angry and frustrated about it. And Emily's like, sweetheart, you just need to deal with reality. It doesn't rain as much here. And isn't that what happens for most of us? We just complain about what we don't have. Like, but, but, but in Houston, it, uh, uh, remember back in the day, uh, uh, and we complain and complain and complain and we become ungrateful for what we have right now. We become angry at those around us. We become frustrated with our environment. And that's why the Apostle Paul, he said, guys, listen, this is very important. This is one of the things that God wants for you. It says, I want you to give thanks in every circumstance because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. He says, if you want to embrace this joy and hope and peace and love that Jesus has, wants to give you, you can't be focusing on the negative. You've got to focus on the positive in your life. Now, it's not ignoring the negative because the negative's still there, but it's choosing to put the negative in its right place and say, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't that big of a deal. I'm going to be grateful for what I have right now. And I tell people, sometimes you say, well, I can't find anything to give thanks for. And you've heard me say this advice over and over again. If you can't find anything to be thankful for, aim lower. And this is not the Air Force. Don't aim high. Aim low. <laughs> aim low. And if you say, well, there's still nothing. Well, aim lower. Well, there's still nothing. Then aim lower. Well, well are you glad you can think and talk? Yeah, well, be grateful for that. Because some people can't think and talk, and they're all running for political office. Anyways. <laughs> that just came to me. That wasn't part of my bit. It's not on the card. Um, so keep aiming lower, right? But here's the challenge with it, okay? Listen, this is a reality. This is cold-blooded right here, what I'm about to say, but y'all know I love you. It's hard to be grateful when you think you deserve something. Well, I deserve that. I've worked hard. This is America. I think one of the greatest problems in our country today is this. We got it way too good. We were reading an article, a, a statement the other day from one of our founding fathers, and it said, we fight today for freedom so that our children can enjoy arts and going to plays and things like that. And, 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 and that's the nature of it, isn't it? They say hard times... Make, or make strong men, strong men make good times, good times make weak men. When we, ha when we don't realize how good we have it, and I mean, I've traveled all over the world, y'all, and I'm telling you, we got it really good here. But we don't realize how good we have it sometimes, and we complain, and we say, well, everybody should have this or that. We should all have equal outcomes. Nope, not possible. It's just not possible. And what happens is we start getting this idea, well, I deserve this. I'm a human being after all. Yes, you are. But, he, but, you, but you know what human beings deserve? Not what we've got. In fact, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, guys, it's by grace that you've been saved through faith. It's not anything you did. It's a gift of God. Not by anything you did, not by works, so that nobody can boast or think they deserve it. And humility and gratitude start from recognizing it is a miracle that you woke up this morning. It's a miracle that after this year, we haven't all killed each other. Honestly, it's a miracle that our country is held together this long. And if we'll just start with gratitude, man, what could change? Instead of saying, well, I deserve, I deserve. I'm, how come he got that and I didn't? Or she could, what? I work just as hard as, hey, life ain't fair. But be grateful for what you have. Because honestly, we don't deserve anything but destruction and death and hell. And if you'll start from that and people are like, well, that's such a dank thing to think of, dark and dank. Hey, this is the reality. Sometimes you got to know the bad news before you can realize the good news. And if you woke up this morning and you're breathing, and you had family with you in your home, man, you got stuff to be grateful for. 
If you woke up this morning and family's not in your home, but you could pick up your cell phone and call family. You got stuff to be grateful for. We live in probably the easiest time to be alive in human history. We have plumbing, y'all. I've gone to the bathroom in my share of holes around the world. Just literally holes in the ground. We have a lot to be grateful for. But you've got to keep in mind this. It's by grace you've been saved through faith. This isn't anything you did did or even deserve for that matter. It's just a gift of God because he's that nice and kind and loving and gracious. Not by works so that no one can boast. So here's what you got to do, man. When you find yourself starting to complain, because listen, I fall for it too. Yesterday was a bad day for Hoel. Um, I'll blame it on the devil. He knew I was going to talk about gratitude. I was feeling so, ah, uh, just, ah, uh, I didn't like anything happening around me. I was so frustrated. And I had to remind myself of my third point here. Joel, look at the big picture. It's so easy, especially for detail-oriented people who were grateful for detail-oriented people. I am not one of them. I think big picture, but when you get detail-oriented, you kind of get in the weeds sometimes, and you're like, oh, man, I've got to get this weed out and this weed out. And it's like, yeah, but look around at all the flowers and things around you. And sometimes we get in the weeds, focusing on all the things that aren't right, all the little nitpicky things that, uh, 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 listen, lift up your eyes and say, oh, look at all of this good stuff around me. This happened to me. I use this example and love slows down. So if you've read the book, forgive me using this example. Um, actually, I used my first example in that book too. But anyway, <laughs> a couple of years ago, I had this dream of taking a hiking team to this beautiful area of Hawaii called the Napali Coast. It's this beautiful, beautiful trail right along the ocean. It goes way back into this remote, secluded beach. And when you, can, when you hike back there, there's like waterfalls coming off the, the side of the mountains. There are these lush, green, jagged mountains. It's tropical. You're doing the whole thing in shorts and a swimsuit because you're hiking through these beautiful crystal clear streams. It's literally a, like it's paradise. These waterfalls are incredible. And then to, to top it all off, when we, when we were hiking, there were whales breaching in the ocean next to us. It's like heaven. Hello. Well, we started hiking early in the morning with my team. We had it all planned out. I was like, we're going to hit this point, then this point, and then we'll camp at the beach, and then we'll come back and blah, blah. It started raining, and the trail got super muddy, and it slowed us down for the rest of the day. And we had to stop about four miles short of where I had intended to get that day. And I was so irritated that we were going so slow. One of the guys particularly, he was just being so cautious. I'm like, dude, you've got to move faster than this. And I remember sitting in the tent that night, just angry. I'm like, oh, my whole plan is shot. This is not going to happen. We're not going to make it to the beach. And I, I remember listening to my team. They were sitting around the, the fire they had made, laughing and just cracking up and splashing in the water. And there's this waterfall behind us. And I, I had this moment. I'm like, pull yourself together, man. You're in Hawaii. <laughs> And to top it off, it was January. And one of the guys in the team's like, you know, there's snow on the ground in 49 states right now. And I'm like, I have no, and here I am in shorts, getting a little wet because it's raining. I'm a big whiner. I was in Hawaii. It's like a dream vacation for so many people. It's a dream for me, but because it wasn't just right. I was ruining the whole experience for myself and probably for others. And how often do we do that, man? We just, we, we lose sight of the big picture because it's not exactly how we envisioned it in our mind and our expectations weren't exactly met. And we can't enjoy it and we ruin the fun. So here's my encouragement for you today. Focus on the positive in your life and that is how you can start by being grateful. And then I'm gonna give you some really practical advice, okay? Here's the practical advice. Keep record of God's goodness in your life. Don't ever fail to do this because it's so easy. You know, what, what was yesterday's miracle becomes today's default. Well, I, I, I have it now and clearly I deserve it, right? Remember when you ever wondered if you'd get married or if you'd get married again and now you have that person sitting next to you and you're just like, oh, I cannot wait to get as far away from them as I can. <laughs> Remember? Remember when you wondered if you'd ever have kids? And now you're like, 
when will they leave? Preach. Right? Yesterday's miracle becomes today's default and it can become a source of great frustration and irritation for us if we start focusing on the negative rather than the positive and remembering, oh man, that was, this kid is a miracle. This marriage is a miracle. The fact that I'm here today is a miracle. God rescued me. Remember, remember, remember the goodness of the Lord. So I want to leave you two action steps. They're super simple and it's great for you to do this with this week, okay? First, every morning... <coughs> Write down one thing you were grateful for. No repeats. Amen. I did this for about 120 days straight, and then I stopped because I ran out of stuff. But I didn't actually really run out of stuff. I just got lazy and stopped doing it. But I'm starting again. Every morning, get a little notebook and write one thing that you're grateful for. And just do one and save the rest for later. And just focus on that one today. Man, Lord, I'm so grateful today that I woke up I thank you, Lord, that, man, I had COVID this year, but I, I recovered. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that in spite of the financial situation, I'm still here. I haven't been, you know, not, everything hasn't been taken away from me. Maybe you're saying a lot has been taken away from me. Well, be grateful for what you've got right now. Start with gratitude for what you've got right now. Stop focusing on the negative. Focus on what you have right now. Do that in the morning with your morning devotional. It's a great way to start a devotional. There's a, uh, there was a uh, famous German mystic named Meister Eckhart, and he said this one time. He said, if the only prayer we ever said was thank you, that would be enough. If you don't know what to pray lately, you're just like, man, my mind is just such a mess. I don't know what to pray. Start with thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And then start giving specifics. Thank you that I'm here. Thank you that I'm not in prison. Thank you that my car didn't slide off the road. Whenever that accident, when, when we were like, the car was out of control. Thank you, Lord, that my marriage is not where I want it to be, but I thank you, Lord, that you've given me somebody who's committed to me. I thank you, thank you, thank you. And then close the night by doing this. Every night, write what went well today. This is actually a, a business practice that we use when I'm coaching people in businesses um, because it's oftentimes hard to remember what you did during the day. So write out really quickly what, what went well today, what actually happened well today, and then end on that positive note because what happens most of the times we end on oh man all the stuff i got to get done tomorrow all the stuff i've got to get done hey focus on what you did do and celebrate it a little bit celebrate the win celebrate the victory this is a this is a challenge for me i'm i'm, I'm always moving forward and thinking about what's next and um that's what Emily, she's always like, are we ever going to have a, you know, like a book launch party for your books? I've had four books come out. We've never had a book launch party. And I'm like, we don't have time for a book launch party. I got another book to write. Maybe for the next one. But how many of us do that? We don't celebrate the small victories along the way. I've got a friend and he, he runs a huge alcohol rehab center, alcohol and drugs, actually rehab center. And he said this, uh, I said, what's the secret, man, to, to people getting over their addiction? He said, well, first they've got to make a decision. And then second of all, They've got to get up every day and win the day. Win today. I don't have to worry about beating alcoholism tomorrow. I already beat it yesterday. All I've got is today. So you win today. And that's what I would encourage all of you guys to do. Man, this week, if nothing less, start every morning this week writing out one thing that you're grateful for. And then close the day writing what went well that day. And maybe you want to discuss it with your spouse or with your kids. It'd be a great exercise to do this week because there is so much to be grateful for in this crazy world in spite of how crazy it is right now. So learn to be grateful. You guys receive that? Yeah. All right, man, I'm going to let y'all out of here real early. It's only 9.51. Anybody have anything they're grateful for they want to share? Make it quick. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.